Troy Coward is an Australian actor starring in a real-life murder drama. A grisly execution has led to a seven-year fight for justice. Tonight, for the first time, Troy is telling his side of the story. Here's Steve Marshall's exclusive report. It needs to be told. The story needs to be told. Actor Troy Coward's played more yeah. than 100 roles, but this real-life drama is really testing his character. You're thinking about what's best for us. I'd much rather watch a TV drama than, than live one out, that's for sure. A gruesome murder, washed up body parts, and a dust up with forensic police provides all the trappings of a box office smash hit. I feel like everyone's covering their own asses. Would you reject any criticism against the forensic team in this case? Oh, absolutely. And life imitating art can be costly. It'll be long, it'll be difficult and it will be demanding. Sometimes somebody's got to stand up and say, this is wrong. I just feel like I'm being robbed. For the first time on Australian TV, Troy Cow reveals the seven-year turmoil engulfing his life. It's a, it's, it is price following sitting here and, um, and sharing with Australia the financial and the heartache of what I've gone through in this whole situation. When did you buy this one, mate? Back to where it all began, where Troy Coward ended up starring in his own murder mystery. In 2013, Troy owned this apartment in Perth's CBD. He had rented it out to this man, Stephen Cooks. That's really where the nightmare started. I couldn't get the guy out. Troy evicted Cookson, but when he went to the apartment to collect the keys off him, Cookson was nowhere to be seen. Instead, sinister strangers were there cleaning up. They were moving out bags, which later on turned out to be the body parts of this Stephen Cookson. Police later discovered Stephen Cookson had been murdered and his body dismembered inside Troy's apartment and dumped in the ocean. It is afterwards when I found out what had gone on and, I mean, I was lucky I didn't open the door or, or walk in because God knows what I would have seen or what would have happened, I guess, so I'm lucky in that respect. Is believed to be the head in the plastic bag. By the time Cookson's severed head washed up on nearby Rodnest Island, Troy had moved back into the apartment and spent $50,000 on renovations. The actor was blissfully unaware he was living in a major crime scene. I got a knock on the door by about nine cops. They said that they were there for a missing persons. Basically, it, it just all went pear-shaped from there. WA police kicked Troy out and the forensic team went to work. After nearly three months of staying in hotels at his own expense, Troy was handed back the apartment keys by police. The apartment was completely destroyed. The state of the door that it was left, it's just been kicked in. This is the incredible state WA forensic investigators left Troy's apartment in after dousing the place in toxic chemicals and powder for traces of blood and fingerprints. There was black ink over all the carpets and the floorboards and everything else, all the walls, um, just everything. As you can see, this is the state that it was left in. This was ripped out of the ceiling. As you can see, there's still black ink all on that. And I said to him, how can I possibly live in this place? It's destroyed. And they said, look, we agree and we apologise, but we're going to get a forensic uh, cleaner to come through and it'll be as good as new and you'll get it back in the state that we found it in. We did say, though, that we don't think we can improve on the situation. Uh, things will have to be replaced. Forensic cleaner Peter Teenby was called in by police to clean up Troy's apartment. He says it was a near impossible job. There's also a residue that will get left behind in... Um, soil surfaces and some of these things would have to be replaced. Soft furnishings, um, obviously the bamboo floor and other items, curtains etc would have to be replaced because there's no guarantee residuals of the chemicals cannot be fully removed to a safe level. I can tell you that the, the blood sample found in the unit was, was critical to resolving that issue. Thanks for seeing us, Commander. WA Police yeah. Metropolitan Commander Tony Flack is unapologetic. If the public thought for one second we hesitated to conduct a thorough investigation because we were worried about cost or we were, we were worried that, that we, we might damage something, 
um, I think they'd be horrified that we, we didn't follow every, every line of inquiry and uh, ultimately there are means by which compensation can be discussed and, and possibly paid. The Troy's request to police for compensation to cover the damage was knocked back. They basically in the rejection letter said that it wasn't done in malice. The police were just doing their, their duty and the property unfortunately being destroyed they didn't deliberately do it. Do you accept that response? No, definitely not. Cookson owed Troy unpaid rent, and Troy had unwittingly cleaned up the crime scene when he renovated the apartment. This made him an obvious murder suspect. Troy believes police ransacked his place because they expected him to be spending the next 25 years in jail. Troy says police also seized around 20 grand's worth of household goods he had stored in another property that they didn't return. Two cops there actually joked about it and they said, well, we thought we had you. And I said, sorry, what do you mean? And he goes, well, he goes, to be honest, you were our number one suspect for a while there. The more serious the crime, the more serious the search. Obviously, if they think that they are on pay dirt with the uh, person whose place is being ransacked, perhaps they might not pay it as uh, much care as they might with uh, the premises of a completely innocent third party. Tom Percy QC hasn't seen a case like this in his 40 year career. I'm not saying that uh, necessarily they, they went for broke and left the place uh, like a rubbish tip because they thought we wouldn't be coming back for 25 years. Uh, no one could say that and I, I dare say that that probably wouldn't be the case but there's always that impression that's left in a case like this. I just spent my savings renovating it for the purpose of sale and now I'm stuck with a completely destroyed apartment. The man Troy met carrying Cookson's body out of his apartment in garbage bags was found guilty for the murder. Aaron Carlino was jailed for at least 23 years. It gets worse for Troy. While the damage to his apartment is one thing, the actor is also deeply concerned the forensic chemicals left behind by police may have significantly damaged his health. Troy cleaned up after police as best he could, but he soon started feeling ill. I had blood in places a, a bloke just shouldn't have blood. So I mean I was wheezing from the chest, I'd had cameras up my nose, down my throat, I'd had um, a whole bunch of stuff going on, eye irritation, when I'd cleaned all my hands, had rashes on them. Troy claims WA police wouldn't tell him what forensic chemicals were used in his place, so he hired a private investigator to find out. And this is what the PI discovered. Crystal violet, luminol and amido black. All of these are considered toxic chemicals and two of them are suspected of having links to cancer. I didn't think that the chemicals were harmful. It was something that we just, as a citizen, you just don't know. And it only takes 26 seconds for any of these chemicals to go through your body. Scientist and public health consultant Elizabeth Ree says no one should be exposed to these hazardous chemicals without the right protection. And because it, he was exposed for so much amount of time, then it actually affects your liver, your kidneys and goes through. And one of the original symptoms is having blood noses and you have blood in your urine and you might come up with bumps or scratches or dizziness. But that shows that your body is actually absorbing all those chemicals to a level that it can't cope. I felt disgusted for the fact that there was no duty of care, no care in the world to, to give someone the keys back. Troy spent another $50,000 on more done. renovations and tried to sell the apartment amid mounting debts. But there were no buyers and his bank foreclosed on him. We've handed the keys back in for the banks to take over because it's devalued a couple of thousand dollars. Troy's apartment was valued at $549,000, but the bank accepted much less than that from a savvy buyer. And then what did it sell for? Uh, 205000 205 grand. And you're still paying off that loan, eh? Yeah, the, the, the bank still wants their money. I've got nearly a $400,000 bill on the property that they still expect me to pay each month and not a cent compensation from this whole thing. Where's the justice in that? Troy's undergoing tests 
to find out what damage the forensic chemicals may have had on his body. But the impact this ordeal has had on his mental health is laid bare in this psychologist report. Distressed, anxious and depressed and suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a reposition notice on the window. It followed the bank seizing not one but two of Troy's properties as he struggled with the financial fallout from the murder in his unit. After the Rottnest murder case, I sort of stuck my head in the sand. Very proud to announce the launch for Beacon Troy's Park managed to find Park solace Park. in helping others battle their demons through his suicide prevention group. For a big, big launch coming up to support the Beacon Fight for Life for better... But it really put my life into perspective of being exposed to these chemicals and going through... I'm still going through medical stuff at the moment with it and... It just made me realise that life is so short and so precious. I just want to get this matter dealt with. Troy's used to a scrap. He grew up boxing with the likes of Danny Green, winning silver at the Aussie titles. Now, as this bout enters a seventh year, Troy's taking his fight for compensation all the way to WA's Supreme Court. So would seven years be unusual to you? Uh, that, that would be unusual. Uh, that would suggest to me a seven years it's a particularly complex claim. I'm unfortunately the one that's had to carry the weight of this whole thing, not just clean up the, the murder investigation the police had left, but then being exposed to all these chemicals and had these reactions and all this sort of stuff. There's no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse for it. Troy's seven-year wait for compensation might finally be resolved in August when he comes face-to-face -face with WA police in court.